If you are tired of letting your past and other people control you, our guest today may be able to help. Stephen Arterburn is the founder of New Life Ministries, a broadcast counseling and treatment ministry, and he's also the host of the hugely popular radio talk show, New Life Live. Welcome to The Harvest Thank you. Show. Thank you. So great to be here with okay, you. Okay, so your name is Stephen, but may I call you Steve because I feel sure. like I know you. I've you listened did. to you. <laughs> I've listened you to your program for many years. Oh, that's so great. Um, I think you're probably most popular or most well-known for your book, Every Man's Battle. Would that be correct? I think so, yeah. And uh, that and then um, my friend Dave Stoop and I, who helped with this, we edited the Life Recovery Bible, which is uh, a Bible for people with addiction and dependency problems. And uh, that's uh, sold almost as many as Every Man's Battle. Battle. But I want to comment on what you said about the mm -hmm. election because I have all these Christian friends that are saying, well, I can't vote for. And I say to them, you know, sometimes you you have to vote against something. And I say, let's take the extreme. Let's say you had a person that was going to kill 20 people a day mm -hmm. and another person that was going to kill 10 people a day. Well, you're not <laughs> for killing people, right. but you would want to go and vote so that you, only 10 people were right. killed every day. I mean, mm -hmm. that's an extreme example, but right. really it does make the point that sometimes you have to vote, mm -hmm. literally use mm -hmm. what you have to influence to get the best you can. And my, my son, Solomon, he's 10, he said, Dad, uh, Hillary Clinton and uh, Donald Trump were in a boat on the water and it capsized. And he said, you know who survived? And I said, no, who? He said, America. <laughs> <laughs> so that either offends everybody uh, or nobody. I'm going right. to use that. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, whatever you, you think, just do vote. I just so appreciate you saying that. I think it's really important. Well, thank you so much for your comment on that. Yeah. Um, also, you're talking with us about take your life back. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've done that before in your own life. And oh, I feel like when you yeah. talk about a topic like this, you have to have the street cred oh, yeah. to discuss it. Kind of take us back to um, the basis or the foundation for this teaching. Well, you know, uh, I was watching a little clip on the Exxon Valdez oil spill the other day. And um, there was this bird just covered in black sludge. And they were cleaning it off with Dawn dishwashing mm -hmm. liquid. And I looked at that and I said, you know, that, that is who I used to be. Wow. Because I had this force inside of me. It, it was all over me. And it was this dark shame. And, uh, you know, I had paid for a, a woman to have an abortion in, in college and really pressured her to do that. And once I woke up to what I had done, uh, I felt like God wanted me to prove that no one has ever felt worse about this than anybody. So I walked around with all this shame and guilt. And one day I heard this pastor say, you know, your past just ended one second ago if you really accept mm -hmm. what Christ did for you. And I thought, you know, this is what Satan wants for me. He mm -hmm. wants me to be reacting mm -hmm. to what I did versus free to serve God. And so in the book, there's a great, great amount about let's don't spend our whole life reacting to the past or uh, you know, your whole life living up against a grudge against somebody or something, but let's be responsive to God. And you've got to resolve those things. I mentioned Solomon. Last week, literally, th this is so amazing. He said, Dad, a, a bully called me a dirty name. And he gave me the initials. And I go, oh, wow, what did you do? And he said, well, I waited a couple of minutes and I walked over to him. And I said, are you okay? I said, you did that? Wow. He said, yeah. I said, what did he say? He said, I don't want to talk to you. And uh, I said, well, then what would you do? He said, well, I waited about five minutes for him to calm down. And then I went back over and I said, hey, you okay? Do you need a friend? And he said, Dad, I became the friend of a bully wow. today. Mm -hmm. Now, that is a 10-year-old who doesn't have a lot of baggage, and he's able to respond right. rather than react. And that's what we ought to do as adults. And if we can't, if we're, if, you know, if we're, every time we're dependent on somebody else treating us right for mm -hmm. us to feel right, then we have a problem. And one of the big things that I talk about here is that all of us need to be the decider in our own lives. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in a, a marriage and it's a relational dictatorship, and somebody's saying, yeah, well, that's what it says right there in the Bible. Well, they need to read all of Ephesians 5 because, you know, the headline is that we, out of reverence for Christ, need to be 
mutually submissive or submit yourselves one to another. Mm -hmm. Now, there's no dictatorship there. And so we all are free to be the deciders of our lives. And if you get married, you, you got to come together and you got to work that out rather than I'll make the decisions, you'll follow, and we're just going to be happy. It, it just isn't mm -hmm. the way it's meant to be. Mm -hmm. and, and you've got to be the developer of your life. You can't wait for the miracle or somebody else to do it. And I was in Utah a few weeks ago, and this church took over a strip club where men were going to lust and sin. And when they did it, Betsy said, what are you going to do about my $10,000 know, money that I get here and church took her in mm -hmm. and she wow. she just graduated from Colorado Christian University and she ministers where she used to strip mm -hmm. and men used to sin and it was so great because they were so proud to talk about Betsy who decided I've got to grow I've got to get in this church I've got to go get my education and I think so often we're sitting around waiting for God to do what God's waiting for us to do. Well, that's my question. My next question for you is, you know, we expect God to do all of the lifting. Yeah. You know, he'll do the heavy lifting, right. but we have to do something. Yeah. We have to take a step. Well, you know, you do what you can do, okay. and then God will do what he can do. And here's what I've found. It's just kind of weird. When you're over here doing this and doing the best you can, God blesses something over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, and he, he just kind of proves over and over again that this isn't, earning his favor. I met a man that was a, an angry atheist 14 years ago, had 32 brain tumors. Wow. They took him in. He was like weeks away. He was living in hospice. When they pull him out of the MRI machine, the doctor comes out and says, they're gone. He was completely wow. healed. Now, he didn't earn that. He was an atheist. You know, a lot of times people think, oh, if I was just more faithful, you know, I could be healed. No, he was an angry atheist. And, and so you don't earn that. But also, you know, he had to choose life or death after that. And, and actually, the only thing he knew was anger. And he got very angry when they, and my, my son said, well, maybe it's because he kind of resigned himself to die. And then he realized, oh, no, I got to start paying bills again around here. But, but anyway, the point is that we have to choose life. Mm -hmm. And we have to make the choice to do the heavy lifting and watch what God will do right alongside them. So what about that person? Because you mentioned shame, and that's huge. And so many oh, people, yeah. how do they choose to not let that shame determine where they go from here? Well, you know, I think uh, there's a process that you need to go through. One is, what would you do? And, uh, you know, when God met with Adam and Eve, he said, okay, where are you? Mm -hmm. Who have you been mm -hmm. listening to? And what would you do? And so we have to say, what did I do? And then what did that cause me to lose? And I need to grieve that loss, just like the loss of, of a loved one. Maybe it was the loss of my image that I'd never get in trouble like this, or I'd never make a dumb decision. But you grieve that, and you forgive uh, whatever led to that. You resolve it, and you accept Christ's forgiveness for you and, you, and you do whatever it takes to work through that so that that's not going to be the thing that you're carrying around the rest of your life because that doesn't do anybody any good. You also talk about self-compassion. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you got to say to yourself, look, uh, maybe you did the best that you could and now you would never do that again. Or you got to say, look, put around you the kind of support that you need, the kind of people that you need so that that never happens again. But beating yourself up, being hard on yourself, that doesn't honor God at all. It does not. You know, I remember, you know, when I first started in my Christian journey, um, how I would beat up on myself. Yeah. And I felt like the enemy was saying, you don't have to bother her. I've trained her right. to beat oh, up so on herself. It's so I mean, true. we have about a minute left. Just kind of share with from your heart what people need to do to take that first step to take back their life. Well, there's a path and a process. Okay. And, and Take Your Life Back has a book and a workbook and a devotional with it. And really, the first thing that you have to do is to recognize, I'm not in control of my life. Something's owning me. Maybe, you know, mm -hmm. it's easy to say the heroin addict needs to change. But if you're dealing with pornography as a man, mm -hmm. you know, that's tougher for you to say, that owns me. Or if you're totally dependent on another person rather than you being free in Jesus Christ, 
you got to take your life back. And when you do, you get to experience God's blessing. Okay, so this is the workbook. companion workbook. To yeah. connect with Stephen Arterburn, go to TakeYourLifeBack.tv or go to Harvest-TV.com for a link to his new project, Take Your Life Back, and the workbook. Coming up later, Brian Bush with your prayer request. But up next, discover how to handle crisis when it comes from this guy, Pastor Mark Lance. <laughs> we'll be right back. Yeah.